Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Tonight, it's dark, it's cloudy, the moon's rising above our head, and you hear howls. But it's not just from werewolves this time, it's from all different types of werebeasts. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is the game called Werebeasts. This is from Bezier Games, and this is the social deduction collection game. It plays 3 to 10 players in about 20 minutes, and you're trying to collect sets of all different types of werebeasts, but you don't want to be too obvious because if others can tell which ones you're trying to collect for points, you can be accused and eliminated from the game if they're correct. So we're going to do a rule school today. I'm going to teach you how to set up the game and play it rule for rule so that you don't have to read the rule book. So let's get going. Werebeast is the social deduction collection game where you'll be collecting some of these werebeasts and maybe even some were chow. But you'll be doing it secretly because you can look at your tiles anytime throughout the game and know what you're collecting, but you don't want anybody else to know. However, you share a gold card with each of your neighbors so you know what the person next to you is trying to collect. And each round a werebeast is offered up and you might be trying to win it by offering up cards that you've won throughout the game and maybe sweetening the deal with some weird child which is like currency. But you can't be too obvious because on another player's turn they could accuse you of which type of werebeast you're trying to collect and if it's true you're eliminated from the game. So maybe you'll try to bluff others by getting cards that don't mean anything because if you're wrongly accused the other players are eliminated. But at some point if you're one of the last two you want to have as many as you can because that's how you win is by getting points for your secret goals. I'm going to show you how to set up and play for five or more players. At the end of this video I'm going to teach you how to set up and play for the three or four player variant. If you're playing with those smaller player counts, I highly recommend you still watch the whole video because many of the basic concepts will be shown and learned during this process. To set up, you're first going to find the 12 gold tiles. They look like this on the back side. This is what those gold tiles look like on the other side. You're going to look for the where chow gold tile. You're going to separate this out from the rest of them and then you're going to shuffle all these face down and you're going to draw some. Now you'll use a specific amount of these randomized gold tiles each game. The amount of them will always be the number of players plus one. So if we're playing a six player game we will have taken out seven of these that we'll use in the game and we'll always be adding these to the where chow gold tile that we took out in the beginning. So you're always going to have the number of tiles of players plus two with one of those being a wear chow. Any gold cards not used in this game can be put back in the box. You're then going to gather all the auction cards that correspond to the gold tiles that we took this game. So here I'm showing you that I've gathered all four of the auction cards for each of the gold tiles that are in the game. Any other auction cards that don't correspond to any of the gold tiles can be removed from the game. Also keep in mind that each set of the auction cards for a specific gold tile will have a double one, where this normally would say where bago, but each of them have a card that's two of them, so it's double whatever it is, in this case, double bago. Also note, there's no cards for the where chow, as those are tokens that we'll distribute later. So now you'll shuffle up all those auction cards and create one large auction deck. Next, you'll shuffle up the gold tiles and deal them face down, one in between each of the players. Now here I have little meeples showing where people would normally sit. These meeples don't come with the game, none of them do, and you don't need them because in real life there'd be a player sitting here. It would be much easier to visualize where these cards go. But for here I'm using the meeples from one of my favorite Bezier games called Mutant Meeples, which is a great puzzly game. Now you remove the two extra tiles that aren't in between people that you have left over. Those will go back in the box without looking at them. This means that there are two sets of auction cards that nobody has for goals. Each player can now secretly look at the gold tile to their left and their right. Notice that you're going to be sharing them. So the brown player and the black player are sharing this gold card. So they're both going to be trying to go for this. They would keep it secret, but for the video I'm going to show you, they're going for the were shark, both of them. And they know it. Both of them know they're both going for it. This brown player shares the were nato with the yellow player. So you'll secretly look at your cards on both sides of you. You can look at them at any time throughout the game, but never show it to anybody else. You'll then deal eight were chow tokens for each player. Any additional wear chow tokens in the game can be left in the box because it won't be needed in this game. Next, you'll assign a dealer randomly. 
let's say it's the yellow player. This player will make sure that the auction deck has been shuffled. They'll then give each player one of these auction cards face up in front of them. Once everybody has a face up card, the dealer will pass the deck to the left. This will be the first player of the game. The object of the game is to not be eliminated and at the end of the game, have the most points by collecting cards that correspond to your secret goal tiles. The game's played over multiple turns, and each turn one player will be the active player, and they'll be auctioning off one of the cards from the auction stack, and this will continue until there's either just two players left, or the auction stack has been totally depleted. On the active player's turn, they're simply going to flip over the top card from the auction deck. Then openly and freely, all the other players are going to be offering you things in order to be the one to be able to win this card. Now they can offer you any amount of cards they may have in front of them, in conjunction with any amount of wear chow. They can offer you just cards, just wear chow, or any combination of those. You'll keep going back and forth with people in real time until you come up with the best deal. You can, you can ask them to counter offer, you can tell them what you really want, but in the end, you'll make a deal with somebody. When that deal is made, you must follow through with your deal. So let's say you finally made the deal with the red player. They offered you their double NATO and two wear chow. That was the best deal you could get. So you would take that from them, the two wear chow and the double NATO, and that player would get the wear nana. This deck would then simply pass to the next player where this player would take a turn just as we showed. If over the course of the game, you collect more than one from the same set, it's best to put them together so people can quickly see how many you have. However, when doing so, if you have a double, whatever it is, in this case a double NATO, put it on top so everyone can see that and count it easily. Now, if when a player is doing their action, they're selling a card, if they get no bids in the first 10 seconds, they can take this card for free. However, if there's at least one bid, they must accept a bid. Now, at the beginning of your turn, instead of directly selling a card, as shown to you previously, you can decide to accuse a player. Now, you can accuse any player. However, if you're accusing a player that's sitting directly next to you, you cannot accuse them for the same goal that you share with them. So let's say they accuse the brown player here, and they say, I accuse you, I think you're collecting wear nados. If either of these two gold cards on the other side of them are wear nados, they must say, yes, you're right, they cannot lie, and they must flip over the gold tile next to them that shows what they have accused. Now, if that active player correctly accused this player, they get to take either all of the auction cards that are in front of them, or all of the wear chow that's in front of them. They decide whichever they don't take stays in front of the eliminated player because this player is now out of the game. However, if when this player was accused, they were not collecting the wear NATO, they would simply not flip these and say, no, you're incorrect. And if that active player incorrectly accused, then that player is eliminated from the game. And the player that they wrongly accused gets to take either all of that player's wear chow or all of the, that player's auction cards, just as I showed you before, and whatever is not taken stays in front of that eliminated player. Then this would move to the next active player. Now, if you accuse at the beginning of your turn, and you're correct, you can continue to accuse as many times as you want, and then after you accuse, if you're still in the game, you can then sell a card like normal. Players continue going clockwise, taking turns like this until one of two things happens. Either the auction deck has been completely depleted and there's no more cards to sell or there's only two players left not eliminated in the game. At that point, all of the gold cards will get flipped up and each player will tally their points. For example, this player has one, two, three, four, because this is a double NATO. They have four points. They had no wear sharks. Where this green player was connecting wear kittens and wear bagos, and they got one, two, three, four, five, six, because both of those are double, so they'd have six points. However, if a player had the wear chow gold, they will get one point for each four wear chow. So in this case, there's four, a stack of four here, a stack of four here, a stack of four here. So that's three total points, plus the wear nanas, one, two, because it's double, three. So that's gonna be a total of seven points for blue. If it's a tie at the end of the game, whoever has the most wear chow wins. If it's still a tie, whoever has the most auction cards win with any doubles counting as two. If it's still tied, well, the tied players both lose because everyone is tired for waiting and everyone else wins. When setting up for the three or four player variant, there's some differences to the main game setup, which was at the beginning of this video. First, you'll always use a wear chow gold tile. You'll then randomly use other gold tiles so that the total amount of tiles is the number of players times two. So in a three player game, you'll have a wear chow tile 
and you'll have five other tiles. For four players, you'd have a total of eight tiles, which is the number of players times two, and making sure one of those eight is the Wear Chow tile. You'd shuffle these up and you'd deal two face down in front of each player. Now you do not share these with the players to your left and right. Like the main game, these are only yours, which means that all of the cards that are in the game have to be at least one person's goal, unlike the main game where two of the card types are not people's goals. And by that, now you can accuse people that are next to you, unlike the main game, and all other rules are the same. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Werebeast and get to the fun quicker than if you had to read the rules yourself. Now, if you have further questions, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video. That'll be the best location to ask additional questions, because not only will I be notified about it, but so will the publisher.